Why, hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to Playframe, and welcome to I Was a Teenage Exocolonist. This is a sponsored episode brought to you by the folks at Finji, who would like you to know that this game is available right now on both PC and Mac. I've got a link down in the description where you can pick it up for yourself if you decide you like what you see. Um, it's great, honestly. Spoiler, I really like <laughs> what I've seen of this game already. Uh, it's a kind of narrative RPG life sim type thing. It's got dating sim elements and some other... Honestly, it's going to be easier to just show you it. Another thing I really like, uh, having the content warnings just as a little option right here in the menu, convenient both for the player and also for the Let's Player, so y'all can see up front whether or not this is something you want to get into or not. So here is the full list of things, just as a little warning. The game does get a little bit heavy in places, but the writing is really solid. The art's quite lovely. I, I like a lot of what this game is doing, so let me show you it. New game. Let's wake up. Warning, this game deals with mature subjects and may not be suitable for all players. Please see our content warnings in the system menu for a detailed list of themes and events. You wake to chaos, a confusion of light and heat and smoke. Fire. Your head is pounding. You must have hit it and blacked out, but you aren't sure how you got here or what on Vertumna is happening. There's something important you need to remember. Your stomach lurches as the floor crumbles beneath your feet, then collapses. Your body aches and your eyes burn from the smoke. A figure appears through the flames. It's your friend. Your... friend? Wait, why can't you remember her name? She's gesturing and shouting at you, but all you hear is ringing in your ears. Uh, our first choice. What's going on? You try to speak, but the words come out jumbled. Your throat seizes around a lung full of choking smoke, and you feel dizzy and confused. Your friend pulls you out of the rubble. She throws your arm over her shoulder and half drags you towards the door. Through it, you see a deep, eerie twilight, a dark blue and cold against the heat of the fire around you. Glow season. Glowing eyes. You shake your head to clear your vision. Is that some kind of dog? Like, from Earth? Sort of. The creature howls and lunges, its jaws open. Really neat visual style to this. You are born on the Stratospheric, Earth's first colony ship, halfway through its 20-year voyage to a wormhole at the edge of the Sol system. Your parents run the hydroponic gardens which make fresh air and vegetables for the ship. Like the other colonists, they bravely chose to make this one-way journey to the uncharted planet Vertumna IV in the hope that they could escape Earth's troubles. They had you the old-fashioned way, merging their genes like they merged their cultures and traditions. They name you... We have a choice. Um... I like Solano, let's go with it. And there we are. You are a bright-eyed child with an active imagination. Sometimes too active, your mom says. Use the sliders on the left to choose pronouns and late teen appearance. These can be changed at any time. Excellent. Okay. Um. Let's... Hang on. Uh... <laughs> you can control this with mouse and keyboard. I'm going with gamepad, and that does generally work, although occasionally some menus can be a little fiddly as you try to figure out which button you need to be pressing. Uh... We'll stick with she, her, but let's, uh... Here, let's go androgynous. And there we are. You have vivid dreams of things you never experienced. Dirt under your feet, skies overhead, endless jungles and strange animals. You wonder if this is what Vertumna will be like. Every child on the stratospheric is given one genetic enhancement. By age six, you see the first sign of yours. Hmm. Eagle eyes, extra fingers, yikes, absorbent brain, super strength, calm temperament, nothing at all. Hmm. I'm intrigued by eagle eyes, but I also... Hmm. Well, okay, so I, I played a little bit of this just to test the game out a while back, 
And I am already curious to see how different things can go based on the choices you make. Uh, so I'm going to go with different choices. I, I went with Absorbent Brain on uh, my first test playthrough. Let's see what Eagle Eyes does. Your eyes have both eagle and owl DNA, so you have superhuman long distance and night vision. Not only can you see all the way to the holo projector from the back of the classroom, but you can read Professor Hal's private holopalm notes. Sometimes they say confidential, which is exciting, but you don't understand most of the big words. So, okay, we've got a card thing here. Uh, zero value, plus one skill on strength challenge win. The other kids think you're a little weird, except... Uh, ah, we must choose our friend. And I'm loving the designs on all of these kids already. So, let's see, we've got... The energetic and loyal Anemone. Anemone is the most enthusiastic person you know. Your favorite memory is the time she taught you how to play zero-G sports ball after class. She never means to get you into trouble, but sometimes you always seem to find it together. <laughs> it's very cute. Uh, let's back up, though. I'm, I'm curious what the rest of this crew looks like. Let's get all introduced. The tough and gentle Cal. Cal's a sweetheart, always ready to lend a hand or play a game. He and Tammy are just as inseparable, so it's almost like you have two best friends instead of just one. Cal teaches you how to take care of all the classroom plants. Your parents are very proud of both of you. Not right. Let's see. The bold and confident Mars. Love her design. Mars is a natural leader. Whenever you're all playing together, Mars is the one who comes up with all the ideas. She can be a little bossy, but that's part of her charm. She always organizes fun stuff for the kids after class. You are both founding members of the Secret Fun Times Club. <laughs> I went with Mars on my own playthrough, so not this time, Mars, but playthrough. I played like an hour. Uh, the quiet and adventurous Dis. Or Dis? Dice? Let's go with Dis. Unlike his serious, studi studious twin sister, Tangent, Dis is kind of the kind of boy who sits in the back of the classroom and doodles on his hall of home. You bond over cracking jokes about the weird diagrams in your textbooks. His quiet nature and his morbid curiosity make him somewhat of a loner, but at least he has a friend in you. Uh, let's see. The studious and mature Tangent. The kind of girl who sits right up front by the hollow projector and always has her hand in the air. She and her twin brother Dis drifted apart when she started genome treatment to make her body conform to her gender. Years later, Tanja is the girl you always knew she was, but her relationship with Dis is worse than ever. Luckily, she has a friend in you. And finally, the shy and sweet Tammy. Tammy's the kindest person you know. She idolizes Antecedent, and is good name by the way, and is always following her around, helping her with the babies or learning how to cook. She has the best snacks at class recess and always shares, especially with you and Cal. She and Cal are just as close, so it's kind of like having two best friends. And you know what? This time, let's go with Tammy. I'll go with Tammy this time. You're 10 years old when the ship finally reaches the wormhole. Professor Hal says it's like a doorway to the other star systems, with the planet Vertumna 4 on the other side. You run emergency drills for months to prepare. When the day finally comes, it starts with a rumble. Then things start to slide off the tables. You hurry to gather near the escape pods, just in case. The emergency area is crowded with families. It's gonna be fine, Solana, your dad soothes. We'll be through this wormhole and down on the planet before you know it, just like we practiced. Your mom gives him a sharp, worried look. Red emergency lights switch on as a siren begins to sound somewhere distant in the ship. You try to breathe slowly like you were taught, but you're very scared. You look out a porthole. The stars are gone. When you're frightened, you... Now we have choices, but one of them is not accessible to us because we have not got the toughness for it. You can see over there on the left, we have a variety of stats, and many of our choices are going to inform what those stats are as we grow older and give us access to different choices and options and possibilities, which is a system I'm really excited about. I, I'm liking this a lot, but uh, we can't put on a tough face today, so we are going to think of a game to play. You start a game of Rambutan with some of your classmates. You pick the topic, types of fruit. Cal thinks about it. I could name 10 kinds of fruit, he says. Oh, we got an extra card. The distraction card for drawing one extra card. The cards will come into play later, don't worry about it. Hmm, maybe I could name 11, Dis mumbles. Anemone confidently counters with 12. Back to Cal. He thinks again, I could name 20. The others shrug, and Anemone tells him to go ahead. Apple, orange, banana, Cal starts. And tomatoes are a fruit, and cucumbers, and corn. The game immediately erupts into an argument of semantics, as many games of Rambutan do. 
You wait. The shaking builds. Then everything starts to get very weird. The hallway stretches, stretches, and you're stretching too, your arms impossibly long. Your head feels like it's slowly filling up like a balloon and contracting down to the size of an atom at the same time. Is this the wormhole? You hear the distant, ominous squeal of metal giving way as the ship shudders and lurches in slow motion. The weirdest part's the sense of deja vu. You're sure this has happened to you before, and you know, somehow, that everything's going to be okay. The shuddering reaches a crescendo. You hear an impossibly loud crunch and feel weightless for a few seconds, before gravity slams you back against the wall headfirst. You black out. As you slip unconscious, you feel yourself twisted out of time. It's today, yesterday, and tomorrow all at once. And more than just one tomorrow, lots of them. Different tomorrows. You find yourself in a place that you know from your dreams. Tilled fields, dramatic ridges, and a stranger, but also not a stranger, grinning as she grabs your hand. Hurry up, she says. I'm not going to let you miss this. Distantly, you can feel the ship's shaking has stopped, and you hear your parents' worried voices. Feeling safe, you slip further into the warm embrace of the stars. You drift. Gradually, your consciousness reforms. You wake up in the med bay. The med bay under you plays a soft or the med bed under you plays a soft tone and an automated voice speaks. Two weeks have elapsed. The patient's cranial injury has completed healing. They may now be safely discharged. As the fog lifts from your head, you realize something seems different about this room. It's so bright. You try to focus on the window. Something is definitely different. Sunlight, trees, ground? <laughs> Let's go with ground. Instead of the familiar blackness of space, bright light from twin blue and yellow suns is streaming through the windows. You peer out and see fields, glass-walled domes, and walls ringed by giant mushroom-like trees. There are construction materials everywhere, and people walking around outside, on the ground. You better get out there and join them. Let's... hmm, how brave are we feeling? So, so we can see all of our uh, kind of starting stats over there. Our enhancement, our childhood friend, and you. I see the heart meter over there, so there's some like social sim, dating sim aspects to this. Uh, and the childhood memories, which in the, are in the form of cards, which again, will come into play later. Let's cautiously step outside. And here we are. Strato Colony. Oh, Tammy jumps as you step out of the ship's quarters behind her. You're awake. Are you all better? You better go see your dad. She points southeast towards some geodesic domes. To walk, click on the ground, click on characters to talk to them. Again, you can play this with a gamepad as well, which is what I'm currently doing. Mouse and keyboard might work a little bit better, but gamepad has worked well enough for me. Hello. Tammy looks concerned. You slept for so long after you bumped your head, she says. I bet your parents were worried. Your dad's working over in Geoponics near those domes. They're called greenhouses. I would go with you, but, um, well, this is as far as I've been from the ship since we landed. Tammy stammers, blushing. It's scary outside. Fair enough. Pretty, though. Um, ah, here we are. Hello. Solana, your dad gives you a big, warm hug. I'm so happy you're finally awake. Dr. Instance thought it'd be best to keep you asleep while your noggin healed. Your mother and I thought uh, you might sleep away the whole year, my snoozy little gooseberry. He checks your head and looks relieved. He was clearly very worried about you, but covers it with jokes and smiles. Aw, uh, you love your dad. Welcome to Vertumna, he says, gesturing around you. You've never seen the stratospheric from the outside, except in pictures. The ship's been separated in two and parts taken off to form other buildings and a big wall around the whole colony. The alien jungle creeps right up to the wall. Only the geodesic greenhouses pass outside it, dotting their way up the hill. Hmm. How did you do this so fast? You've been asleep for weeks, my dear Aubergine, that's a word I don't know, he says, and these geodesic greenhouses practically put themselves up. But some of this is only a quick, temporary solution, he admits. We'll keep growing and improving things. One day our little colony will be as big as a whole city. Oh, before I forget, he pulls out a package from his satchel and hands it to you. You blink and stare at it blankly. Don't you know what day it is? He asks. 
You honestly don't. You remind him you've been asleep in medbay. Happy birthday, he shouts, wrapping you in a warm hug. Your birthday already? You feel a dizzying sense of deja vu. You stare hard at the wrapped package. You know exactly what is in there. You remember it. Now, you dreamed about this package some years ago on the ship. Inside will be a small medallion in the shape of a sun that your dad made by hand. Uh -hmm. Okay, so we could open the package and tell him you know what's in it. Or not open the package. Let's not weird him out. Let's just open it. How, how did you know this? It's exactly as you imagined, as you dreamed. A feeling of panic rises in your throat. Your hand shakes. But how? Your dad notices. Are you okay, Solana? He snaps his fingers. Dr. Instance shouldn't have let you out so early. Sometimes those sleeping meds take a while to wear off. They might make your head feel funny for a few hours. You nod. Maybe, maybe that's all it is. Someone shouts your dad's name. Listen, I'm so sorry, Solana, he says, but I have to get back to work. There was an accident when we landed, and he stops himself. Don't worry, we're going to fix it, your mother and I. Professor Hal's expecting you in classes, uh, if you're feeling up to it, your dad says, pointing west to the engineering wing in the rear end of the bisected ship. Then he points to the large doors you came out of earlier. Or you can relax in our quarters until you're feeling better. We'll talk later tonight, he says, then kisses the top of your head and ruffles your hair. Have a wonderful birthday, Solana. I love you. We've unlocked studying humanities and engineering. Um, let's... Here, love you too, Dad. To enter buildings, click on the door or the flag beside it, or get close and press enter or another action button. Then choose an activity for the month to gain skills and advance time. There are 13 months a year and 10 years to the end of the game. You will only have time to focus on a few things. And that is where the sort of RPG slash life sim elements come into play. Limited time to develop relationships and grow our own skills. And relationships and skills will probably hinge upon each other in order to progress in specific ways. So there's lots of ways this game could probably go. I'm making some guesses and assumptions here, but uh, it's what it seems to be leading toward mechanics wise. And I'm liking what it's hinting at. Hello. You see Dis sitting on the ground beside some bushes. Is he hiding from somebody? He seems to be watching the gate in the wall to the south, where grown-ups are coming and going. Kids aren't allowed past the walls, he says quietly, without looking up. They say there's nothing to be afraid of, but then why do we need walls? You stare at the gate, and have a sudden rush of memory so strong you think you might faint. You imagine something crashing through the wall, something enormous and dark and wriggly. For years in space, you've had half-remembered nightmares of monsters, of your ship being destroyed, of sifting through wreckage that used to be your home, trying to find something. Your dad always tells you the dreams weren't real. Breaking you from your daydream, Dis whispers, I think there are monsters out there. Hmm. I believe you. Stop making things up or our parents will keep us safe. My first time through, I said, I believe you. Let's see what this does. Maybe, Dis mumbles. He doesn't look convinced. So, when I said, I believe you, he did not believe that we believed him and thought we were making fun of him. So, I'm just interested to see how... I'm interested to see how this one hour of play for this video here, like, how different does the outcome <laughs> turn out to be over just the course of an hour? Which is not going to get us very far into the game from the look of things. But we'll see. He looks down at his feet. If you believe everything they say, I guess you should go to school now. Like a good girl, he sneers. You shake the vision from your head. It was just a dream. Diz must have made you imagine it with his creepy talk. Why does he always have to be like this? <laughs> well, Diz, you continue being like that. I'm going to talk to Anemone. Hi, Solana. Anemone seems really at home here. She's rolling a sports ball around with her foot, making patterns in the weird blue snow. This stuff is different from snow on Earth, she tells you, because it isn't cold. But it's still neat, and you can make stuff out of it. Your foggy head clears a little. Anemone is simple, physical, and real. You always feel grounded near her. Let's see, what are you making? Have you seen any monsters? Why aren't you in school? <laughs> what are you making? Just snow spirals, she says. But earlier, me and Cal made a big snow pal. You missed it while you were sleeping in medbay. She smiles her broad, gap-toothed smile at you. Now that you're awake, we can play. But really, why aren't you in school? She smacks her forehead. School! I wondered where everybody was. 
Guess I'm going to be late for humanities class. She doesn't look very worried to you. It's okay, she says. Professor Hal's chill. He won't mind. But we should probably go now. She grins and starts running toward engineering. Hey, race you! No fair, she's getting a head start. <laughs> Not a very fast one, though. You're losing the race. What else have we got here? Got our whole sport ball set up. We've got whatever this is. Ah, the garrison. A small team led by security chief Rhett was enough to keep the peace on the stratospheric. To stay busy, they also ran the exercise gym and sports ball courts. Here on Vertumna, the garrison's expanded fast. They're building a huge wall around the colony and have an outdoor firing range and a big covered dojo. And, best of all, a regulation-sized sports ball court. Alright, let's go to class. A low throbbing noise comes from the engine room, which provides power to the colony. Other corridors lead off to the teaching labs and med bay. You know the routes to your classroom well, but the rest of this wing is off limits to children. Congruence, the ship's onboard AI, beams down at you from a nearby holoscreen. Don't forget to study hard, Solana. Let us pick an activity for the month. We could study life sciences or humanities. Hmm. Well, our, like, brain segment of the stat screen over there to the left is looking frighteningly empty right now. Maybe we should study some life sciences a little bit. In either case, we're going to gain some stress and also a little bit of friendship with Tangent, so... Let's do it. Good afternoon, my burgeoning biologists and up-and-coming chemists. Professor Hal welcomes you back to your old classroom. This afternoon, we'll learn what I like to call the wet sciences. He gestures to his holoprojected lesson plan. Biology, chemistry, medicine, ecology, and geology. You'll learn a little bit of everything, with opportunities for further study in your favorite field. If you're looking for something a little drier, try registering for engineering classes. For today's lesson, Professor Hal tells you, we'll start with a fun group project. You'll be studying the mush tree, a prominent natural resource native to Vertumna. In the ideal conditions, it can grow at a speed of over a meter a day, and at a diameter of, of up to 30 centimeters. He stands on his tiptoes and gestures to illustrate. Your team will experiment to find those ideal conditions. You are teamed up with Tange and Cal, and are given a mushroom spore and a bucket to grow it in. The rest is up to you. Tange looks up surveyor's notes on the hollow net. Mush trees, she reads, are most abundant south of the colony in the stormy, moist regions of the subaqueous swamp. What if we use water instead of soil, Cal suggests, like they do with hydroponics? Tange nods. If they like wet weather, that might work. Solana, do you have any suggestions? Hmm, lower the water's pH, put it under a bright grow light, sing to it daily, run an electric current through it, all of the above. Hmm, I'm starting to see why the brain section of our stat screen is empty. Um, but that does seem funniest. Why not try everything? You fill the bucket with water and spark snow crystals and attach a small battery to run a weak current through it. You push it over to a spot under a grow light and plop your spore inside. Every day you rush into the classroom to check on its progress. You and Cal si sing quietly to it. Tange refuses to assist in that part, but it doesn't grow. By the end of the week, your bucket is the only one with no plant at all. You don't know what you did wrong. Maybe everything? Professor Hal's disappointed. Your experiment wasn't very scientific. If something had worked, how would you know what it was? You don't even get half marks for your effort. Alas. Well, let's get to work. Now, here's where the cards come into play. When you work or go to class, you will play a quick card challenge as the month passes. Move cards to fill the five panes and make the best hand you can. The order matters. If your total in the circle on the right reaches the goal value, you win. Depending on your cards, some challenges can't be won, but you still get a reward for doing your best. So, you get a bonus for flushes, same color as being uh, close together. You also get bonuses for pairs, the same number being put next to each other. You get bonus for straights, increasing from left to right. Uh, the more cards in a flush, pair, or straight, the higher the bonus added to your total. Cards can also affect each other and can be rearranged to find the best score. So here we are. We need to get 10 points. And we got lots of yellow and red here. So let's start uh, here. Let's start with this, this. So we got those two reds together. And this allows us to do these in a row and have a pair with the uh, two zeros there together. And boom. Yes. 
Thank you, Tammy. <laughs> we win. You worked well this month. Plus one biology, and several other things, and reasoning, and stress, and tangent friendship. Your skills increase when you work or go to school with extra skills if you win the challenge, and a kudos bonus if you make the highest scoring hand with your cards. Oh cool, there's a best possible answer. Working also increases stress, which prevents you from working if it reaches 100. To relieve stress, take a month off to relax in the quarter swing. Noted. Your parents have been working from first dawn to well after dinner every day. You know growing food is an important job, and it's vital to get crops in the ground right away, but there seems to be something more than that. It's such a change from growing up on the stratospheric, when you saw them all the time. You stay up and wait for them at night before going to bed. Though you can tell they're exhausted, they make an effort to spend some time with you. I'm sorry we haven't seen much of you, little gooseberry, your dad says. Your mom watches, as you, uh, watches you as she works a pebble out of her gardening tiller, which also serves as a crutch. Have you been holding up? I learned some stuff in school, kind of. I learned what doesn't work, which is everything, if you do it at once. I'm glad to hear that, your mom says. I want you to study hard, work hard, and stay out of trouble. Your dad smiles. And Professor Hal will give you kudos if you get good grades. You can spend those at the depot once it's open. You know, says your dad, raising an eyebrow at your mom, I think there are lots of different ways to learn, and school's just one of them. You can learn from working on a hobby or by helping a friend. Your mom shakes her head and sighs, though you can tell she's trying to put on a gentle expression. We both agree that this colony is an experiment, and that means we're going to do things differently than on Earth. You're old enough now to start making your own decisions about your education and future, and if that means you find your own way, we'll accept that. Your dad puts a hand on your shoulder. We'll be proud of you no matter what you do. Try talking to your friends, and they may have ideas for how you can spend your time. And come by Geoponics, your mom adds. We could use your help. Oh, you've, um not heard how my plant experiment went. I think I'm more helpful from a distance. But we'll see. Early quiet has arrived. Well, or we're further into the early quiet season. How's it going? Hello, my little potato, your dad exclaims, smiling warmly. What have you been up to today? So far, nothing. Playing in the fresh air. He breathes deeply and looks slowly around. Vertumna is magnificent, isn't it? You nod. Seasons, he shouts, throwing his hands wide. I missed seasons! Back on Earth it got much, much colder, and the snow wasn't half as pretty as our spark snow. He sighs, stretching. You just wait until dusk season. Both the suns will be high in the sky and it'll be real hot then. You'll see. Sounds awful, but I'm not a heat person. You find your mom hard at work setting up the greenhouses with a small construction crew. You've seen these plans pinned to the wall of your family's quarters for years now. These geodesic domes will house the more delicate plants from Earth. Spinach, tomatoes, maybe even fruit. She takes a swig from her canteen as you approach. Looking for something to do? She asks. Remember, Solana, you're responsible for your own schedule now that we've landed. You can decide how to spend your time, so long as it's productive. She points toward the engineering wing in the back half of the stratospheric severed frame. Professor Hal is still expecting you in class, but a well-rounded education includes practical application. You're old enough to help with the work around here. She claps her hand on your shoulder. I've got another minute. Anything you need to know? Hmm, what sort of questions do we ask? Uh, what are you doing in geoponics? She looks down and nudges at a sprout growing between her feet. It's green, the color of earth plants. We're doing our best, she says, but it hasn't been easy. I just hope the potatoes and corn can handle the weather here, she says, glancing up at the sky. I hear it rains like hell in the wet season. She takes a long look at you, up and down. You're growing fast, Solana, but you're still too young for real farming. Instead, well, there's a lot of soil that needs to be hauled. Seeing your disappointment, she nudges you on the shoulder. Don't pout. It'll help build those muscles. You'll need them now that we're out in the real world, doing real work. Out here, we have to rely on our physical strength. She flexes her biceps. Your mom is really strong. Hmm. I would ask all of these questions, but just to ensure that we actually get to see more of the game, let's uh, move on along. Uh, okay, bye. <laughs> uh, this house is going. Dis looks at his feet and pretends not to notice you. Hmm, we have to be way more brave to dare him to eat a worm, so bye. Who else is out here? Anyone? Ah, hello. 
Anemone is bumping a sports ball with her wrists trying to keep it in the air. Heads up, she shouts and bumps the ball in your direction. Think fast. Not tough enough to do a trick. We'll just, um, panic. Look out, a ball's flying towards you. You flinch and jump out of the sports ball's way as it careens past your head. Whoa, that was close. Anemone doubles over laughing. Nice save, Solana, she giggles, jogging over to pick up the ball. <laughs> Not. Want me to show you how to do it? Okay. You bounce the ball back and forth with her, trying to see how many times you can rally and keep it going. Anemone tells you about the new sports ball court, a proper regulation size court, way bigger than the little zero G one in the stratospheric. Her brother Com is uh, coaching the junior sports ball team this year. He's so great, she says. He's good at everything, especially spiking. He's coaching me to play awesome like him. You should come join us. Ah, oh, we've unlocked sports ball. Maybe we will. I feel like our brain is still lacking according to those stats. What other spaces do we have? Ah, another friend. Hello. A sharp whistle interrupts your thoughts. Hey, Solana, Mars calls out to you. Come here, I have a job for you. You walk over to Mars, who's sheltering from the snow under the ship's overhang. It is so gross here, she complains. The spark snow would ruin my good clothes. At least on the ship we had climate control. Ugh. Tammy made some soy sweets, but there's no way I'm going out there in all this weather, she continues. Since you like running around in it, could you fetch them for me? Hmm. Okay. Good, Mars claps. She's probably just down the hill near our quarters. Mars sighs. She's scared to take more than a few steps from the door. All she wants to do is hide inside and make sweets. I can get that. Hello. I'm here for sweets. Tammy is staring obliviously at the sky, smiling to herself. She startles as you approach. Oh, oh. hello, Solana, she says, putting a hand to her chest. Do you need something? I am here for Mars's soy sweets. Tammy smiles at you. Oh, it's so nice of you to help out, Mars. She's a very important person, you know. She hands you a box wrapped in a pink and yellow scarf. One order of mango soy sweets made fresh this morning, she says. Please tell Mars that she can have the scarf back, okay? She used, she used some of her kudos to nanoprint it for me because it's so dusty here, but I, I think I'm getting used to it now. Well, that's very sweet. Tammy smiles again and tucks her hair behind her big elven ears. Mars is so cool, she says fondly. Sometimes she's kind of bossy, but I know she really cares too. I shall now deliver. You still have a dot dot dot. What does that mean? You see Tammy sitting quietly near the entrance to the lounge. You've known her for, well, your whole entire life. Back on the ship, you used to... Hmm, study partner? My stats suggest otherwise. Let's say play. Tammy had the best doll collection. After her mom died, her dad used all the, his nanoprinter creds to print her a different doll every month for a whole year. Her ears perk up when she sees you. Oh, hello, Solana, she says. Her voice is soft and dreamy, like a beam of starlight. Do you want to play dolls? I sure do. You don't think Tammy will ever be too old to play with dolls. If anything, she has even more of them now. She teaches you, to, or she takes you to her quarters and brings out the entire Spacey Stacy doll collection, a disturbingly realistic baby with real bowel movements and two super fancy posable dolls named Lily and Tilly, who can be programmed to move on their own. Tammy isn't very good at the programming, so Lily and Tilly just roll around awkwardly when you turn them on. You cover quickly by saying they must be breakdancing at a club. The two of you spent the afternoon making up stories of their rise to stardom as professional dancers. Time well spent, I think. I'm here with a delivery. Mars puts out her hand expectantly. Give it here. <laughs> hmm. Ooh, if I had more persuasion score, I could try to <laughs> negotiate a bit, but I don't. So I could just say I ate them, but that's, that's not true. Here they are. You hand over the box of soy sweets with a smile. Mars takes it and giggles. You are such a good sidekick, doing everything I say. I am a good sidekick. She opens the box and hands you a soy sweet. Your tip, she tells you. Oh, and Administrator Seek's looking for someone to do delivery jobs for the depot, she says. I don't want to do it because, like, you running around out there? No. Just go through there, she says, gesturing to the door behind her, and tell them I referred you. So helpful. All right, um, hmm. Should I study more, or... Oh, let's find out about this job thing. Command is a warren of long hallways with doors off to tiny, nondescript offices. Everyone you pass seems to be hurrying off to something important. The end of one hallway opens up into the supply depot, which works as both requisitions office and general store. Beyond it are cavernous warehouses, stacked high with supplies from Earth, now being gradually unpacked and distributed. Hmm. 
Not strong enough to apply. We could view the notice board, I guess. Colony food fall shortage, minus 100%. That seems bad. Colony security rating, evaluating. Upcoming event, we will be hosting our first annual Vertum, uh, Vertumnalia festival during the second week of dust. Notice, take precautions outside of the colony boundaries. Xenofauna have been sighted in the area. Survey teams are investigating. Hmm. Current council and administration, Governor Udicott, command. Chief Administrator Seek, command. Chief uh, Security Chief Rhett, garrison. Chief Engineer Instance, engineering. Chief Cultivator, Flulu, geoponics. Chief Steward Antecedent, quarters. And Chief Surveyor, melatonin, expedition. Uh, expeditions. Well, we're too bad at everything to do anything. Let's go learn to do things. Maybe we should, hmm. Brain skills or strength skills. Let's do some strength skills. I don't want to go to school and how many pouts, but I guess we have to. You know how to get there, right? Through the door in the engineering wing behind me? You know, the big thing with the rockets on top, she laughs. I was confused too at first. I'd never seen the ship from the outside before. I'm not strong enough to train together. Oh no, goodness. I'm off to a bad start. We'll study some more. We can't really register for engineering classes yet. That's fine. Let's study something else. Maybe humanity some more. We've already got, like, why not? Let's, uh, we do need more brain power though. Like empathy, we've got some points in. We could achieve some goals with empathy, but I feel like we need to like raise some of our base stats a bit so we can do even basic challenges. <laughs> more life sciences. Give me another go with a plant. I think I can get it this time. You learn about Vertumnan geology by comparing various rock samples from Earth ones uh, from Earth to ones from Vertumna, placing them on the Mohs hardness scale. The Earth samples are so weird and gray compared to the pinks, purples, yellows, and teals collected by the surveyors. Earth must have been a dull place. It's true. All right, another challenge. Let's see what we can do. We need 12 this time. So, and I'd love to get these four yellows in a row. So let's hmm, draw an extra card. Plus one skill on toughness challenges. I don't think this is a toughness challenge. It's not. So let's, uh, hmm. I could get more of a straight with this one, though. Yeah, let's do that. Zero, zero. The two ones. And the two. Boom. We win. We're victorious. No stars, though. Wow. I'm not very good at the minigame. But I'm a little smarter now. This week you had a few more bouts of deja vu, remembering what somebody is about to say or do just or do just before they do it. Sometimes they actually do it, but not always. This morning you were sure Professor Howe was gonna trip on the uneven floor in the cafeteria and spill his plate of hash browns. You even told Mars to watch. He didn't, though. As Professor Howe walked away, his hash browns safe for today, Mars called you a liar and a dummy. At night, your dreams are all mixed up with the stuff that you know can't be real. You're chased by monsters the size of buildings, only to be saved by strange people you've never met. You're holding hands with someone you love. You're crying as you help lift a shrouded body into the colony recycler. Everything seems so familiar, but when you try to recall their faces when you wake up, they're smeared in your memory like wet paint. But what if... what if those things haven't happened yet, but they will someday? Anytime you try to tell someone they think you're being uh, they think you're playing a trick or that you're sick and need to go to med bay, you eventually decide to stay quiet about your strange dreams. Why? Hmm, don't want people to worry? You just want to be normal. Secret powers are fun. I agree. You start keeping a private journal on your hollow palm, recording the events where you remember something before it happens. You also write down your dreams when they have that feeling of being real. You like the idea of being magic and seeing the future, but some of those dreams are very scary. You hope that, like Professor Hal's hash browns, they don't all come true. <laughs> I'm really enjoying the writing in this. Welcome to the mid-quiet. Well, rather, late quiet. We're near the end of the season. Hey, Tang. Tangent is hunched over her hollow palm, frowning and poking angrily at the air. She speaks without looking up at you. Professor Hal wants us to prep a list of native flora with pictures. There should be a catalog on the colony holonet, but I can't find it anywhere. Hmm. I'll help. 
You launch your own holopalm and start searching the colony's holonet archives for a list of vertuminal plants and animals. Ten minutes later, you find it buried under survey logistics in the expedition's net. Anemone passes by and pulls a face at the two of you. Hey, hollow nerds, she shouts. School's over. Come play sports ball in the sunshine. Tange just rolls her eyes. I don't know. Sports ball sounds kind of fun. Anemone's running around the sports ball court, touching her hand to the ground at each corner. 18, she counts. 19. When she reaches 20, she collapses into the grass and checks her hollow palm. I'm training, she explains. Big bro, My big bro calm says I have to get my legs acclimatized to the planet if I'm going to be team captain like him. I'm really just too weak to train. It's a problem for me. Can I do anything in here, I wonder? I can just play sports ball, which will slowly develop toughness. Okay, maybe that'll be what we end up doing. Our stress level is getting a little high, I notice, up there. Maybe we should be careful of that, but I don't know. Our skills are bad. Skills are bad. Could be better, our skills. Anyone got a dot, dot, dot? No? Well, I'll still check in with our bud. Tammy's dad is the head of expeditions, which means he's out surveying the jungle every day. This morning, you see her crying in the doorway as he leaves. I don't like when he goes out there, she sniffs after he's gone. But he is so brave, and so are you. That's why I like you, Solana. Hmm. Let's perform a random act of kindness. It's a, a thing we actually have stats for for once. You start simple. You give Tammy an enormous hug, sharing the love. Tammy gets a, lo a lot of hugs, but you make sure this one feels special. She hugs you back, wiggling back and forth happily. She's surprisingly strong. Thanks, Solana, she says breathlessly as you squeeze the wind out of her a little. I really, really needed that. Oh, before you go, she adds, and produces a box with a slice of cake in front of it, uh, on it from the folds of her skirt. Do you want this cake? They're so fun to make, but I need someone to help me eat them. I'll make you another on your birthday if you like, and we can trade hugs for cakes again. That's a good deal. Hugs for cakes. Cakes for hugs. How are you doing? Oi, Solana, Mars says, looking you up and down with a sneer. Your shoes are gross. That's what you get for walking around in the dirt out there. She sniffs. Not me. I'm sticking to the ship until they pace and pave over all that icky mud. You wonder if maybe she's scared of more than just getting dirty. <laughs> I would tell you about my day, but I am not good enough at persuading <laughs> to convince you to listen. Fair enough. Um, ah, you've got a dot dot dot. Cal's riding around the geoponics gardens on his hoverboard. The board comes to a sudden shuddering stop on the rocky ground in front of you. Cal falls off, but catches his balance before he eats dirt. Hi, Solana. Uh, real ground is way harder to hover on than ship floors. There are bumps everywhere. Hmm. We all have to adapt, don't we? Yeah, Cal exclaims. Things are actually way, way better planet side. Hovering outside's rad. Look at this. He runs over to a small depression in a nearby hill and presents it like it's something amazing. Look at this. It's a skate bowl. A what now? Like, it's all round and the sides go up? Cal gestures to the bowl. So you can do hover tricks? He jumps on his board and shows you how it's done. Let's just... I don't want to hurt myself. I'm not very tough. Or... I'm not very a lot of things, according to my stats. Let's just watch. You spend a lazy hour watching Cal ride around the bowl, trying to do tricks and sometimes even landing them. Mostly he falls off, but he's right back on a moment later. The air is so fresh and nice out here, and it's weird experiencing temperature. You start to get a little chilly as the first sun goes down and the slightly cooler, more blue sun rises. Cal, of course, doesn't doesn't notice at all. See, I'm really enjoying the writing in this and the characters and all the stuff they're doing. I'm really curious where this is going. Oh, hello, you're new. I need some water, hang on. <laughs> it's a lot of reading. You step cautiously through the colony gates. Hey there, kiddo. Uncle Tonin blocks your way with a smile. I'm afraid Expeditions is off limits for now. It's not safe out here for the kids. You better toughen up so you can join the squads when you're older. Hmm, I am neither of these things. Rough. An info window pops up on your hollow palm when you get closer. What do you want to know about? Hmm. Let's start with... Here, we'll just do one for now. Uh, the Prosaic Plains. These lie far to the north of the colony, where the higher elevation and natural tilt of the planet makes bromidic snow fall more regularly in every season. Though prone to sudden storm flurries, the plains are a relatively safe place to explore, filled with mostly herbivorous xenofauna. 
Neat. All right, moving on. We got stuff to do. Which is to say, sports ball. I need toughness. Wait, that's right. Can't train with you, but I can play games. Which will build up bravery and toughness and friendship and stress. Anemone meets you on the court. She's bouncing from one leg to the other in excitement. My brother Kam is organizing the youth team, she tells you. Kombucha offers you a high five and greeting, then tosses a sports ball your way. Let's start with the practice game to see what you're good at. You and Anemone are team captains. Pick your team. Anemone used to practice with Cal and Mars on the ship, but Tammy? You're surprised to see her here. Kam will fill in to even up the teams, but he promises to go easy on the other side. Hmm, okay, we gotta pick, gotta pick our team here. All right, Tammy, you join with me. Cal said I should join you, but I'm not very good at sports. Where should I stand? She asks quietly. You, you aren't sure. You assign her to tackle back and tell her to stick like glue to the opposing team's offense. Maybe she'll get in their way instead of yours? We can only hope. Anemone chooses kombucha, of course. They bump fists. Your next choice... Mars, get on my team. I'll play Spiker. Mars runs to take position. Seems like she's in it for the glory. Hopefully she'll want to share some of that with the rest of the team. You face off three on three and begin the game. Our first toughness challenge. Looking for more difficulty, this harder card challenges option will keep you on your toes. If you want to focus more on the story, this will replace future mini games with a quick coin flip based on your age and skills. You can change either option anytime from the settings menu. It's nice that you have the option both for greater challenge and just skipping the card thing if you're wanting to do the story side of things. All right. Story challenges have three rounds instead of one. After every round, you'll keep the cards you didn't play and unlock an extra slot to play them in. Losing isn't always a bad thing in story challenges. Interesting. Okay. Well, we've got three to start. So for first round, I say... I say we do... This... Nope, this is already a bad start. I take it back. You go back. Oh, neat. I hit a button and a different thing popped up. <laughs> anyway. Just figuring out how to make this not be here. And can I? I can. There we go. Okay. All right. I think I want to have these three be like the last three in the row. So let's do... Here. These two. And then we'll go to the next round. Oh, I thought I was going to keep those there and expand. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So we just need to choose the best option for however many slots we have. Cool. Okay. We've got four slots this time, and I say we just do... It's tempting to do a lot of ones, <laughs> but let's uh, get this one in here. This one, this one, and this one. That's a bit better. Final round, okay. Um... A lot of zeros and ones, so we can probably do something good with this. Let's say... Uh, hmm. Zero and one. And zero... Zero and one. I don't think we're going to quite pass this challenge. Oh, we could push through for more stress, though. That's interesting. You know what? Why not? We're determined. Or, well, let's see. Maybe there's a way we can actually still pull this off. Let's, uh, instead of... Okay, here's another idea. Uh, here's another idea. Uh, no, wait. Hang on. I could also use this uh, metal I have to give me plus one to a challenge, which is cool. So I've got that on hand if I need it, but I think I've got another idea. Let's do, uh, zero, zero, and then just a lot of ones. That, I think, might do better. Considerably better. We win. Hey, and we got three stars, even. 
Good for us. We finally got a little toughness on the board. Tammy tackles Anemone in a brilliant takedown that surprises everyone. She really took to her role as the immovable object. The score is tied, with Anemone and Cum putting the pressure on. Then, bam, you score the match point with a rad spike all the way from the net line. We did good! We worked great this month. Look at all the bravery and toughness and stress we have. We really should chill. Ooh, early pollen. New season. Very pink. How is everybody? Have you gone outside the colony yet? Tanj asks you. I hear all sorts of terrible things. Regardless, we're not allowed to stray from the gates unless we're on expedition. Tanj rolls her eyes. Not that it stops my brother. Wait, has he been going outside? Hey, are you breaking rules? You need a break soon. That's true. We should probably rest. Dis is hanging out near the south gates, his hands in his pockets, idly staring at the ground and digging the toes of his boots into the dirt. He nods at you but doesn't say anything. Someday I will make you eat a worm, but not this day. Hey, friend. Tammy's dad is the head of expeditions, which means he's out surveying the jungle every day. Ah, oh, yes, okay, so we've heard that from you. But we can't do a random act of kindness this time. Too short on empathy, even though it's our best skill. How's it going, Mars? You've heard of Vertonelia, uh, right? Mars asks you. You know the festival we're holding in dust season? I've already got my routine ready for the talent show. She flips her hair over her shoulder and laughs. If you have a hope of competing against me, you're going to need to get creative. I don't think I do have a hope, but I'll try getting creative anyway. Ooh, I'll also find a hefty red Xeno egg. I don't know if it's safe to do so, but I'm keeping this with me. Hmm. Well, let's try just taking a rest for a month. The ship's quarters are where everyone sleeps, eats, and hangs out. The private bedrooms are small. You share one with your parents, so colonists spend most of their time in the big common area. There's a lounge and a cafeteria, and a creche where all the little kids and babies are raised communally. Let us relax in the lounge to gain some friendship with Tammy, uh, I'll lose all of our stress, and forget one memory optional. Interesting. The lounge is a long, well-lit hull along the outer hull of the ship's midsection. It's strewn with tables and cushions and serves as a communal living room for the tiny one-room spaces where fam uh, every family is assigned. You flop down into the lounge's big beanbag pile with some of the other kids. Cal has a dazed, peaceful look on his face. The air smells so good on Vertumna. And so does the dirt, even. You notice his clothes are filthy, but obviously Cal couldn't care less. Anemone bounces in. Holy crap, there's so much space to run around and play in. Common Chief Red set up an outdoor sports ball court, and it's way huger than the old one on the ship. Tangent carefully selects one cushion from the pile and perches on it. The school is expanding to some of the empty engineering bays, she tells you. And we're getting a big new lab to do experiments using local resources. There's so much to learn about this planet. Anemone rolls her eyes, but Tang continues. We shouldn't forget our studies just because we've landed, she says primly. Hmm, school is important. Which is not what I've been living, clearly, but... I do kind of want to explore the jungle. I don't miss space. I'm rather enjoying my time on this planet here. I will aspirationally say, school is important. Tammy nods in agreement. It's scary out there, she mumbles. I'm going to stay close to our quarters for now. You've had less of the deja vu dreams come to life feeling this week, and you're starting to think you'd even imagined it. But suddenly you get a prickling sensation in the back of your neck, and remember that Mars is about to enter the lounge and tell everyone to look outside. You stare at the door. Mars walks through it as if on cue. OMG, everybody look outside. They're hoisting a flag over command, she says, clapping her hands excitedly. You know what that means, right? She stands tall with her hands on her hips. Vertumna is officially humanity's first exocolony ever. You look at the flag, feeling dizzy, and silently mouth the words along to what she says. You remember this moment so well. This is history, kids, she exclaims, wrapping an Emony and Tangent under each arm. And we were there. Relaxing. You took the month off. <laughs> we did it. Do you want to forget anything, though? That's interesting. So I've not gotten far enough in to where I know the benefit of forgetting things, but we have, like, 
13's cards here in this deck we have built, and there's probably a limit to the number of cards you can have, or even if there's not, there's going to be benefits to having, like, only good cards in this deck, so I could see there being value in, like, forgetting some of the really early uh, lower number ones, potentially, further down the road. For now, it's not, but I'm, uh, I am curious. You wake from an afternoon nap. The dream you're in is one you've had many times. The air is strangely pink and fluffy, kind of sticky, and you have to push your way through it. It feels like every step takes an eternity. You push through the pink cloud and emerge into the children's creche, a room you know well, to see your friend Tammy standing before an enormous bear made of pure light. It lunges at her, through her, and she collapses to the ground like a fainting fairy tale princess. You wake with your heart racing. Tammy's leaning over you where you've been sleeping in a nest of pillows. She shakes your shoulder gently. Oh, I'm sorry, Solana, she says as if speaking to a small child. I, I think you were having a nightmare. Are you okay? Are you? Nothing bad happened in the dream, but you feel sick with dread. Um, since you're awake, you should visit the cafeteria. Antecedent is making a new kind of candy. She says it's made of cotton. Isn't that weird? I have to go tidy the crash first. Uh, then I'll meet you there. Save some for me, okay? Tammy skips off toward the crash, humming to herself. You feel groggy and need a minute to clear your head. That dream. Hmm. From a past life, forget dreams, get that candy. From a past life, wait, go save Tammy. I don't want any candy, so this is interesting. From the from a past life thing. I have... Alright, we're going to see what happens here. I don't remember if the from a past life queue was there last time I played, and I didn't, like, delete that save or, like, save over it or continue or anything else. I just started a new game here. I don't remember if that from a past life thing was there. Last time, I, uh... Don't think wait, go see, save Tammy was an option. Forget dreams, uh, get that candy. I think it basically was the option of go get candy or eh, I don't want any candy. And I went to go get candy. And then Tammy died. So let's go see if we can go save Tammy. You sprint down the hall to the children's creche where the little kids play and learn during the day. It's empty. All the younger kids are probably off eating candy with antecedent. You spot Tammy tidying up some drawing supplies near the crafts bins. Above her, a hollow projector displays an enormous floating teddy bear made of purple light. It bobs silently in the air. Mr. Bearsworth. A decade of happy memories playing with it flash through your mind in an instant. Tammy stands up on her toes and reaches for the switch to turn it off. You slam into her, knocking her off her feet into the ground. At the same moment, the hollow projector sparks and explodes. The bear disappears and the whole room goes dark. In the dim emergency lighting, you see Tammy's eyes wide with surprise and fear. She sits up and rubs her elbow, staring at you. <laughs> Accident, sorry. <laughs> sorry, are you hurt? It's okay, she sniffles, looks like looking like she might start crying. Why why did you do that? Howie. Hmm. Let's be honest, I'm curious to see where this goes. I just saved your life. My life? She says. She peers into the dark room, looking even more frightened. How? You try to explain that the hollow projector was going to shock her, but she doesn't seem to understand. What? How? But it's Mr. Bearsworth, she says. It's just a toy. She doesn't believe you, but that's okay. You're just happy that you followed your dream and got here in time. You decide not to mention the dream, since she seems kind of weirded out already. After a minute, the lights come back on. The projector is dead, a thin trickle of stinky smoke coming from the base. Don't worry, Tammy says, brightening as she gets to her feet. Professor Hal can fix it. He can fix anything. By the time you find the professor and the professor and finish cleaning up, you've forgotten all about the pink candy in the cafeteria. That is very, very interesting. So... Like, this is a good stopping point. You, you get the idea, roughly, probably, of what this game is by now, yeah. So, to let you know, like, fill you in on what happened with mine, uh, like, previous time playing through on kind of a test run, uh, I had done about half of the same things that I did this time around. Uh, Mars was my best bud from the start, and Tammy was, like, I was kind of making loose friends with all the characters around. Uh, but then, 
after that little scene there where Tammy was going to go to the crash to uh, go check on a thing and there was cotton candy to be had, I really think I only had the two options, which were like going and uh, getting candy or not getting candy. And uh, the next day, parents walked in letting me know that like one of my friends had died. And then like it was pretty heavy for a little while, like some more months passing of like the kids like trying to kind of respond to that. And like it's it got very serious very quickly, but life was going to go on. And that was still only like halfway through the first of 10 years. So like I'm very interested to see what it's like seeing these kids grow up and seeing where the game goes from here and also like what repeat playthroughs could do. I've seen I've played other games that have this sort of life sim narrative RPG thing about them and I like them a lot. There aren't enough of these in my opinion, but I've not played one that where there's this sort of interesting ability of you remember little flashes from past attempts and that gives you some more options to play with. That seems very interesting to play with. Glad you're okay. Tammy is sitting down in the grass with a baby on her lap. They're playing nicely with some flowers or a strand of the ba beads in Tammy's hair or something. Tammy keeps gently removing her hair from the baby's mouth. Oh, Solana, she giggles as you join her. Aren't babies the best? There are so many new babies in the creche, you'd think we were starting a colony or something, Tammy laughs. But the parents are too busy doing other work and somebody needs to take care of the little ones. She looks down lovingly to the baby who's now sucking on part of her skirt, getting it good and damp with baby drool. You could help too, it'd be fun. Oh, we've unlocked babysitting. The baby chooses this moment to spit up a big puddle of pale yellow liquid into Tammy's dress. Oopsie, Tammy coos and picks the baby up. Then she holds them out toward you. Could you take them for a minute while I find a towel, Solana? The baby hiccups and rolls their eyes. They still look a little queasy to you. Uh, okay, I guess. <laughs> you hold the child at arm's length, willing them to keep the rest of their stomach contents in. They hiccup again, then let out a tremendous belch, as loud as a drunken sailor. You have to admit, that was kind of cute. This is a pretty good game. I am kind of all about it. So if this looks like it is your jam, I highly recommend going and picking it up. It is on PC and Mac. Uh, there's a link down below where you can go pick it up. Thank you very much to the folks at Finji for uh, sponsoring this episode. And congrats to the studio... Oh, whose name is escaping me now? Darn it. Uh... <laughs> Shoot! Congrats to the studio and the developers who made this. This seems like it's going to be a great time, and I'm excited to see some more of it on my own time. So, uh, anyway, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you tomorrow for something else. Take care, all of you, and goodbye!